So why do some children end up becoming prodigals, whereas others never stray from their relationship with the Lord? And how does God want to heal your heart from the pain your prodigal has caused? Well, today's guest is here to answer those questions along with sharing how there is still hope if your child has walked away from God. But first, joining me around the table is Kendra Kelly Dean. Hey. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad that we're talking about this. This yeah, is important. I think is. that a lot of parents are going to find freedom today. Yeah. I think there'll be some understanding. And I, I have to say, this is one of my absolute favorite guests. And I know that you know that. Yeah. But I love this guest, and I'm glad that he, he, he is here with us today to talk about this yeah. particular it's subject. It's important. It really is. Our kids are so important to us, Dorothy Newton, aren't they? Oh, very, very important. You, you put know? so much into them. You try to train yes. them up in the way they should go, right? Exactly. <laughs> and as a parent, I've done all I can do. Now I just pray. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's all well, I can that's, do now. That's really what we're going to talk yeah. about, yeah. too, as yeah. well. Anna Kendall, you train them up in the way they should go, and when they're old, <laughs> yes, they won't depart from it. Amen. It may not be on our timetable, but God, God is in charge. Yeah. That's right. In charge of them His and their children. His word is true. That's, That's right. right. How are you, hey. Cindy Johnston? We hey. have we have our kids all grown up now. We do. Thank God, they all love the Lord yes. and they're serving God. But. They had to find God on their own terms, didn't they? They definitely did. And yeah. there were moments that were difficult and trying for them as well as for us. But yeah. God was faithful. He's so faithful. Yes. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great. And you know, I was thinking about what everybody has said in, in this topic. I think this program is going to really help parents that are struggling with guilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That they maybe didn't do everything just right. I think this will really help. It is. Especially, I think, for those that are watching today that... You blame yourself for you didn't do this or that. We, you need to stay right there because we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna ask the Lord to remove all of that and give you peace in your situation. Well, he's an author, speaker, and licensed psychologist, and today he's here to share about his new book, Prodigal Parent Process. Please help me welcome our dear friend, Dr. Doug Weiss. Hey! hey. hey. Wow, that is oh, the fastest. Yes. Listen. That showed excitement. You have just won the award for that the fastest right. entrance. That's the way a man enters a room. On to Joni Table Talk. We I got mean, a lot to talk about. I mean, because sometimes I kind of have to talk and hum in there while they're walking. Well, they meander in. Yeah, they kind of meander, but not you. I just looked Jeez. up and you were there. All right. Oh. Doug, all right. We, are all, we all come from imperfect parents, and we are all imperfect parents. Is that correct? Amen. That should be so, a scripture, right? It should be. Yeah. So we can just relax. None of our parents were perfect, and we're not. So That's guilt right. should not be a part of our of our. Feelings. You just wanted to get that on I the table. I wanted to get that on like, right away. I mean, I mean took off there not running. Not yes. I'm not a perfect parent. <laughs> but there was a perfect parent. There, there was, was, And yes. he became a prodigal. A prodigal. He became yes. a parent prodigal. Is that not the most you know what I'm saying? interesting like, thing that you all ever blind. thought about? God, God was the first prodigal parent. But tell, was perfect. But, but just tell, like, go through the, yeah, yeah. Sure. the process. So God, God, like all parents, create a perfect and a wonderful environment. You get the house ready. That's what you did, creating the earth and all that. And then he had these two uh, great kids, no sin, no exposure to sin, right? right? Only, great food. Only great food, yeah. right? Great <laughs> right. views, the whole thing. Yeah. And only one rule. It wasn't like your house. You know, my house, there's one, one, one rule, right? One Just one. one. And, and God became a prodigal, and he kept his word. Like, if you do this, this is the result. Yes. Yeah. And he did not blame himself. He didn't go, well, maybe I wasn't a good enough God. Yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe I didn't do something right. And He's he didn't like, no, say, this maybe that's too hard. This is 100% on you, yeah. and the consequences are 100% on you. Wow. Yes. And wow. out you go. All right. And that so, is free, right, right there. there. Right out of the garden. <laughs> I mean. You know, and, but, but he was a prodigal more than once. Then the whole tribe of Israel, he adopted them, uh -huh. and they became a prodigal again and again. Uh -huh. And so God understands the parents who have prodigals. He understands their pain, and he understands what they're going through. And that's what a lot of this is. This is for the parent and the that's grandparent. So mm. you got to get rid of the false guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and I, you're, you're really speaking to a specific group of people that are watching right now, and that is... The whole the, church. Yeah. The, yeah, the, <laughs> well, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. I mean, people who... Who, who tried to raise their, their children to know the Lord in church. Mm -hmm. and, and you're not perfect. None of us are perfect. But we also have to talk about those parents that were horrible parents. Yeah. I oh, mean, my, my parents were horrible parents. I mean, and you have to talk about, I mean, you can't just release them and say, oh, right. you have no guilt. I mean, yeah. if they did everything wrong, if they were drug addicts, and, mm -hmm. you know, there were kids that were raised that way. So you have to speak to that too. But we're speaking specifically 
uh, to so many good parents that are watching right now that you have blamed yourself and the enemy has tried to make yes. you feel guilty Torment. and it is a lie from the it pit is a lie. of hell. A lie. And you're actually yes. identifying a principle we have a whole chapter on called cause and effect. Now, Christians, there are a lot of principles that we buy in cause and effect. If you tithe, God will protect your money. If you do this, God will do that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of that, but parenting's not one of those. Like you illustrated, you can have really sucky parents and raise a prophet of God. Mm -hmm. You can have prophet That's of God so and have an alcoholic as a child, mm -hmm. okay? Right. Mm -hmm. Because parenting, there is no cause and effect. Wow. Zero. Because okay. it's a free will. It's free will. free will. Free will free throws will. out cause and effect. So no matter what you do, good or bad, your child has the ability mm -hmm. to choose God with all their heart or to become their own God. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. and that is the choice yes. of every man and child that's born because parenting is a risky business. Yes. Yes. There's no guaranteed outcome. God does not guarantee outcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if you raise them up, yep, when they're old, they might get there. Okay, but that's the part of the scripture we don't preach on. Mm -hmm. It might be 30 years, ma'am. It might be 40 years, exactly. sir, yeah. and they'll come back. How we don't preach old. on that <laughs> part of when old is old. Yeah. Right. Okay, um, so but it you is know a what? Process. I mean, there there's a lot of importance to place on prayer. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of importance to mm -hmm. place on, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Amen. I mean, so, and when grandmothers pray, I'm sorry. It's a good thing. It's over. Yeah, it's a done deal. But, but the thing, I think the, the biggest problem is for parents watching is to forgive themselves for what they did or did not do. Well, you and I have talked about it, Cindy. You know, when you went through a divorce, well, should I have made this decision right. or that? Or even though divorce wasn't your fault, mm -hmm. well, should we, you know, you know, and and you do question yourself. And those are the people we really, I want to speak to today. And to, they question to, each other. Yeah, for you to be free. You weren't there. Mm -hmm. You yeah. didn't do enough. If you yeah. would have said this, if you would have been wow. a better man of God, if you'd been a better mom, yeah. then they wouldn't. So we get into oh, blaming yeah. each other, mm -hmm. not just ourselves. Awful. So the, right. the book really covers that too. Like wow. this can destroy a marriage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because prodigal is trauma. When mm -hmm. you have a prodigal, you're in trauma, mm -hmm. you're in pain, because someone who has your heart who is doing whatever the heck they want to do mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and taking your heart with it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Dorothy, I know you, you and I have talked about, really I've talked with all of y'all at the table about this, but uh, when you went through a divorce, it's not something you planned on right? or Absolutely. that you believed for, but it affected your kids. It did. And, and, you, and here you boys. are, you're trying to raise your kids in a godly yes, way. absolutely. Two boys. But, you know, the thing that I did, and I'm not saying this is right for everybody, is that I knew I needed to make the sacrifices. Sacrifices meaning focus on God, mm -hmm. you know, as a father, the head of our house, raising the boys, academics. I worked hard. And I just, I, I did nothing else but serve in the community, in mm -hmm. church, got them involved. You know, that's all I knew that's what to do, path, you know, path. but sacrifice myself. Mm -hmm. I never, ever dated again mm -hmm. wow. by choice, you know, because I knew that the focus was real yeah. wow. and I had to pour in everything to them. Sure. So like I said, it doesn't work for everybody, but that's a choice I made. Yeah. And guess what? Now that they're older, they're young adults, I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I've done everything I could, Absolutely. and I know Surrender. that I've done it to the best of my ability with God. Yeah, amen. And so amen. whatever happens, the only thing I do now is pray. Amen. Right, but you're not living with guilt because no, you know you did. No, no, no. no. The best you I could. Truly yeah, you knew where you were in the battle in. and you were there, yes. so that's awesome. Yes, I walk amen. in total confidence and freedom amen. because amen. God held yeah. my hand through it all. Amen. And even though my boys, you know, um, you know, their father was abusive. Mm -hmm. They they saw a lot. Mm -hmm. they, you know, that still was not an excuse or a reason mm -hmm. to go astray Amen. because God was the foundation. Amen. And I, I, I just thank God, thank God for the relationship yes. we all had with mm -hmm. them. You know. Mm -hmm. so. What about the child that um, that grows up, serves God, loves God, gets married, serves God, loves God, and then? Later in life. Oh, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's but tough, they, that's but tough they, for the they, wife, it's tough for the kids, it's tough for the, the family of origin. Yeah. Because uh, you can become a prodigal any time, because the prodigal is a mm. process. It's Romans chapter one. Yeah. They know God. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. They reject God as God, 
they, they're going to make their own decisions. Um, then they become ungrateful, which is a really interesting first characteristic of a prodigal, because I've never met a really happy prodigal, hmm. okay? Yeah. And then yeah. their, their thoughts become distorted, so they start talking about all kinds of stuff that makes you crazy. Then their heart becomes darkened. Mm -hmm. The very way they process becomes darkened, and then their behavior changes a lot. Mm -hmm. And so none of those steps include a parent. Wow, wow. Well, Not one of those steps. But, but the thing about it is that scripture still train up a child in the way he should go, that even if they go away and come back, come oh. they st you still stand and believe God. Well, you still stand and believe. It's yeah. just you don't get to control the timing or the outcome, right. actually. And, and so what happens, I've it. seen this, I've raised thousands of right. prodigals, Joni, because I deal with sex addiction. These are the prodigals. This is where the behavior is at the bottom. And I've seen thousands of men and women go from the bottom of being a prodigal all the way back up to honoring God as God, being grateful yes. and yes. having a heart full yeah. of light. So yes. I don't care. So that's why I have so much faith for the prodigal because I've raised thousands of them. Yeah. Yes. So now they're 40, they're 50, they're 60, but they come back. When they come back, they come back Yay. hard. Can we say yes. they come yes. back? Yes. I love that. That has to bless so, you so much, right? Yeah. It's fun. To see them like, make that transition. Oh, yeah. So the scripture works both ways. Yeah. The verse yeah. is reversible. Yeah. Like, you, it works both ways. So what does a parent do that, like Joni was mentioning, you have a child and they end up going mm. astray, but then you have the child, the sibling, mm. that stays mm -hmm. faithful, yeah, that's a good honors, point. stays at home, like the story we yes, know. Yeah. Where well, it was the like, story wow. you know, though, gets misinterpreted because I have a whole chapter on that. Okay. Because a lot of times preachers will say, well, and the son, the other son was self-righteous, and that was his sin. No, he wasn't being yeah. self-righteous. He was being a brother. Mm -hmm. Because that brother knew what that younger brother was already up to. Yes. He and the, knew. Well, and the brother also knew the, the pain that the, the parents pain. had been yeah. through. He's seen dad cry. He's right. seen mom yeah. cry. And he, look for him to come home. And so yeah. sibling love is a little conditional. Mm -hmm. It's not unconditional like parent love. It's, it's somewhat conditional like, okay, if you show up, we'll give you a year or two. Let's see if you figure. So we don't want to rush our kids to do forgive and forget. So you got to let them work yeah. through that process. Let them work right. through the process. Say, you know what? It's okay to take your time. You've been in pain too because your older brother humiliated you. Mm -hmm. wow. People thought you were a drunk and a loser. Mm -hmm. But you know right? what, Doug? There are kids. There definitely is that personality that mm -hmm. you're talking about that would be like, okay, this isn't right. They did this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Then there are other siblings that would react differently. Like sure. they're not always going to react no, the same. Not. There are some that will have enough grace mm -hmm. to say, thank God my brother yeah. or sister is yeah. back home. Mm -hmm. And whichever one they are, but that, I think that's an important part of the equation that you're dealing with all these different kinds of personalities Absolutely. with these children. And variables. Yeah. Yes. You know, if they, if, they, if they live in the same town, it's different than if they went to California and did all that crazy stuff. There's a lot yeah. of variables. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's great to have grace, but it shows up in both ways. And let the kid decide their path. Because yeah. the parent you know, has to like, deal with the The parent's going to be instantaneous. Situation. Parents are parents. Hey, they're home. <laughs> Let's party. Okay, yeah. it's over. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> right? And yeah. the siblings, are some Some of them are a little cautious of like, well, let's just see if this storm yes. doesn't like resurface yes. before we get yeah, to Yeah, well, excited. you know, we do the life languages around here. Mm. I'm, I'm convinced the brother was a mover. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, he, I mean, he was a standard bearer. That would, that's one of the yeah. life languages yeah. that yes. that would have been like, this isn't right, you know, <laughs> da, 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 that's you right. know. That's right. But then you have the other, you know, personalities, because I've, I've seen it in families where they're believing as much as the, as yes, the parents, parents are. The responders they're are just as grateful, and, yeah. Yes. So, um, Kendra, I want to let you jump in here. I know you have. Yeah, I wanted to talk about how, important it is for parents, but also the siblings, to have the opportunity to grieve their losses through the mm -hmm. whole process. Because it is hard for a sibling mm -hmm. whenever they know we've been raised the same way, why I'm are totally. you behaving like this? <laughs> and then to kind of feel like, well, what, did I do something wrong? Mm -hmm. But also how, as you learn to forgive, mm -hmm. forgiveness isn't always reconciliation. You right. might not always get that opportunity oh, to sit true. down face to face. Mm -hmm. And so could you speak a little bit to the parents and to the siblings that might be struggling and letting go of their own guilt and forgiving that prodigal? Yeah, and how would well, you not have reconciliation in, in a family? And wouldn't that be the goal, even if it was yeah. a very difficult situation? Well, you definitely would want that. As a parent, you'd want that. And even as a sibling, you probably would want that. Yeah. Uh, if the prodigal allows that to happen, that's a whole other issue, because sometimes right. they're not rational. Right. You know, and they get into all kinds of addictions and crazy stuff and money stuff and legal problems. And, and there's, you know, you borrowed $10,000 from you didn't pay out. me back, yeah. right? Yeah. There's a lot of issues that go on. So I think as, as a sibling, you know, you, you know, praying for God to give you the grace of heart. But there, there's the thing about forgiveness. 
the person doesn't have to repent for you to forgive them. Right. You don't have to confront them for you to forgive them. They don't even have to change for you to forgive them. Wow. Forgiveness is 100% on you. Mm. You don't have to have them participate in that process. So good. Right. There you know doesn't have to be reconciliation for you to forgive. No. And sometimes I'm even smart to reconcile because they're not done yet. Yes. You, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I love you, man. But no. Well, sometimes God is still working a process in that, in that person, yes. and you're just going to get in the way if you try to get Absolutely. in there. But if you truly forgive and you pray that way, your heart stays open. Then your heart's going to start. It stays That's open. Right. It yeah. stays open. So when yeah. they are able to, they'll exactly. receive love from you, even if it's with some boundaries, you can still love them. So you said that there's actually a grief process. In oh, your sure. book, for, that for, the, for the parents and yeah. the siblings. And you, you said know, the first one is kind of shock. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's the my kid. No, yeah. that's not my kid. Yeah, right? what about the anger? <laughs> it was their friends. Right? The anger that then shows yes, up after that. Absolutely. And what is the bargaining? Bargaining is if I would have been better, if they would have met that person, if he didn't date that girlfriend, then yeah. they wouldn't be this way. Yeah, it's you trying to, to mitigate some of the pain. So, the, so let's just go back and get, go through the shock one. So the shock is... When you get that phone call that your kid's in prison, or they're oh. drunk, or when they got someone Or they've pregnant, been pulled over for a DUI, something. or yeah, it's like, something. So something way out of their character. And you just, it literally freezes your body. Yeah. You're like, it's like you have no, it's like you can't even believe what's mm -hmm. happening. Okay, and so then denial. Denial's like, no, they didn't really mean to do that. No, if they wouldn't have been with those, no, that's not really my kid. That's not their heart. Yeah, a lot of, a, a lot of, yeah. a lot of heart. parents will, will do that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's just denial. Oh. Because cause if they're bad, I'm bad. Yes. And no, no, no. If they're bad, they're bad. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It has nothing to yeah. do with me. Yeah. So yes. parents don't get there right away. And then after that is a denial. After that is a anger. You're mad that this yeah. is what they chose to do mm -hmm. and legitimately. And then you bargain uh, about mm -hmm. them and yourself. Like, well, if there were different variables, this wouldn't have happened. And then there's sadness. Like, this is my life. I have a prodigal. And this is where the church could do better. Oh. If we can have prodigal parent groups Mm. Wow. And send them to groups where they can go through the workbook, go through the video, learn that it's not their fault, learn mm -hmm. how to support one another. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's where they could help the marriages because you will fight about this. And so when your prodigal says, Dad, I need $2,000 to do this, yeah. mm -hmm. you, you present it to your group because if it's just between you and Dad's going to say no, Mom's going to say yes, and now we're going to hate each other and not have sex for two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a problem as opposed to if you take it to your group and if some lady across the room says, you know, ma'am, don't give your kid $2,000. That ain't going to help him. He needs to get a job. Right. I'll tell you what. I'll give him yeah. $2,000 and he can come work for me. Yeah. Wow. Well, now that now we have the body of Christ yes. helping, so helping awesome. the prodigal. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Groups church needs so to be. Yes. And right now what we have is a don't ask, don't tell. I'm not going to talk about my prodigal. Don't talk about your prodigal. Let's just pretend it doesn't even exist. There's shame there. And there so should be true. no shame because you didn't do anything to make a right. prodigal. We're not responsible for our kid's behavior. We're responsible, like God, to create the environment. To provide right, the food, good. to provide the shelter, to provide the wisdom that we can provide, and yeah. that we can do it imperfectly. But we're not responsible for our children's behavior. That's mm -hmm. how we all learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why we all make mistakes. Wisdom is the accumulation of mistakes. We are when they're little. <laughs> that is, that is so we, true. we are responsible for their behavior, though, when they're little. When they're little. Because we're supposed to be the one training them up. Yeah, and but teaching even them. so, you might have one of those personalities who just not yes, going to be manageable. The envelope. If you have a world-changing child, a world-changing child. <laughs> if you have a world-changing child, I think three world-changers. You are changers. not going to yeah. be. Yeah, they're yeah. going to do their thing. Yeah. Okay, because they're internally motivated. So you. Yeah. you, well, you just try to guide it the right direction. That's all you can do. Which one? Yeah. Of your, which one of your two were <laughs> the were the more um, interesting? <laughs> Ordering. Brendan, my youngest, was the more interesting one. Didn't you love that word I used, interesting? Yes. <laughs> I mean, but he is... He was strong. And he now he's the pastor outside, of the church. Yeah, now he, he's the pastor yes, of the church. Yes, he thinks outside of the box, mm -hmm. and I'm more... I like the comfort of a box. Yeah, sometimes. you're externally motivated. He's internally motivated. Yes, yes, but I'll tell you, one thing that I did as a pastor's wife is I talked to all of their teachers in Sunday school, at church specifically, mm. and I said... Please do not ever correct my child by using, you should act differently because your, son, right. your dad's really a pastor. Right. Thank you. Yeah, yes. because Every pastor wife should do that. They, uh, their dad being a pastor will not get them to heaven. Right. But by saying, you're a Christian young man and you don't 
react like that or lying. So the Bible mm-hmm. says. Or just something. bring good old God into the equation. Yeah. Yes. That's how I got saved when I was six. I pushed somebody off the swing. Yeah. And the mother, the mother came out and said, you, did you push Laurie off the swing? And I said, no, I did not. And then she started bringing Jesus into it, and he sees everything. And all of a sudden, I had this realization. Wow, that Jesus God, is real. That God sees everything. He saw and that me. I could ask for forgiveness, so I admitted to it so I could get forgiveness. That she just Aww. barely touched her, probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, I gave her a real good, real good show. The legitimate sin. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, it was a strong show. You know, when you, you can make, you can help people, I mean, children understand who God is yeah. at a very young age. And I, yeah. I had that realization. It's still just as real to me today as ever because I was going to be one of those kids you're talking mm. about that, yeah. But um, what about your childhood mm. and, and the fact that you're here today? That it's a pretty miraculous story too. Well, that's a whole chapter in the in Particle Parent Process book called Cause and Effect. Okay, my parents were not mature. They were not believers. I mean, really not good at parenting in general. And so... Um, you can be, like an alcoholic, drug addict parent can end up with a prophet or a pastor. A, pa- a, a prophet or a pastor can end up with a drunk mm-hmm. because cause and effect doesn't apply to free will. Mm. You can't have cause and effect and free will That's in the same true. equation. You can't yeah. have it. Free will is free will. So your child will, even if you make a lot of mistakes, they can get radically saved and move on. Uh, or if you made almost no mistakes, they can decide that they just want to be worldly and go do that thing. Yeah. So how were you, like, as far as like what you saw demonstrated from your parents, how did God intervene in all of that? Because I want to just encourage parents that are watching that they did it the wrong way, mm. but they're still believing for their prodigals mm. to come Absolutely, because, well, there's a God. Okay, well, my mom did send me off to uh, Salvation Army. I got saved there, and I believe God kept his word to me. Okay, and so I went through the drugs and alcohol and women, all that stuff, and then got radically saved. You know, but God did it. There wasn't a preacher. I was just outside, and me and him had a conversation. Did somebody and, witness to you, though? Mm-mm. So what did you say to God? Mm-hmm. That's how my grandpa got saved. He just had a conversation said, with God said, at 19. I said, I said, I said Jesus, I, I know that you're God, and the way I'm living right now, I don't want to live the rest of my life because so I'm going to kill myself in 30 days, but I'm going to give you my life for 30 days, 100%. I'll do 100% what you do to make the bet fair, and at the end of 30 days, if my life isn't better, I'll, I'll kill myself then. And so what happened? I got radically saved. And then I was what in happened? Bible school 30 days later. <laughs> wow. So what happened over that 30 days, though? He just supernaturally provided and talked to me, and he gave me anointing with the Word of God. I had to start reading the Bible, and it started making it like I, could, I, could, I understood it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I wanted to know more, and I was, in, I was in Bible school about a month later. That's so good. Yeah, nice. but so there was that. no parent involved. See, God doesn't need a parent to save right. a child. Actually, there's a whole chapter that in my 35 years of raising prodigals, I'm talking like 5,000 people, okay? Rarely, if ever, does God use the parent to bring the child back. Wow. Mm. So what you want to pray for is God send people who can yes. relate to my child yes. and, mm-hmm. and give them the gospel the way they can hear it. Send them to my child. Yes. You yes. know what I'm saying? And he does. God supernaturally does that. Well, and two, I, I hope it's okay that I say this, but I really want our audience to pray for your son. Yes. Because we need a miracle with him. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I know you don't talk about it, but I know it's near and dear to your heart. What are you thinking as you're sitting here? I'm thinking that there is more hope than I was aware of until I had this program. Oh, good. So the hope is increased and my faith is increased. Amen. And I do believe, Mm. you know, my prayer has just been for God to get through to his Mm. heart. Mm. But I haven't prayed as effectively for God to send Christians to him that that I'll start doing that. That's awesome. And and, and for God to create the circumstances, like the prodigal in the story. Uh, There's a famine in the land. Yeah. That's an international crisis. He had a personal day. crisis. Pray for God to use whatever crisis it Absolute takes to bring your kid home. Yeah. Can we can we you say know? his first name so everybody will know who to pray for? Michael. Michael. Yeah. And pray to Michael. pray for all the children. Amen. Because he's got seven children. He has seven wow. children and one great wow. one grandchild. That's hard. That's hard for grandma for sure. And there's a lot of grandmas who have a situation like yes. that. Mm-hmm. So thank you for sharing. And Anna wants to go through the video and workbook. I said, you have it. It's yours. Oh. Okay? Yes. I'm going to yes. Because right. this is the thing. If you take your pain and go to your church and say, listen, I have a prodigal. I want to start a prodigal group. This video and workbook, that's all you can do is push a button and read. If you can do that, start a group because surround Mm -hmm. yourself by four or five other couples who can 
carry your child yes, to Jesus yes, every yes. night. And when your child calls and they're drunk, you say, no, call John. John wants to meet with you. He'll have, he'll have coffee with you because yeah. he loves you too. And I can't look at you right now. So he'll, he, you can sleep <laughs> yeah, in his house. Oh, and what so happens is now we have a team of people yes. who, are, who are praying and interceding for this, yeah. this group of children that are prodigals. This the church the needs thing. to be the yeah. church. And you also have a group that can celebrate with oh, yeah, each yeah. other when they come home, it's a whole picnic, man. It's barbecue. It. It's <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> one's home. Okay, yeah, nine let's left. Party. Let's get serious, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and I, they can start they can start really seeing God. Well, move. you know, and too, I think that uh what you mentioned and Anna, you mentioned it too, is that when you pray, well, first off, you gotta give those kids to God. Amen. Mm-hmm. Okay, because totally. we give them and take them back and give yeah. them take yeah. it back. But the other thing is, I always pray this when I'm praying for prodigals mm. with people. I will say, Lord, send people across their path. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. God, just supernaturally yeah. send people, mm-hmm. you know, that they, they have no idea, but, you know, and, and give them dreams, yeah. Lord, yeah. and exactly. visions. Exactly. And exactly. I do all, I mean, I just pray for every supernatural <laughs> thing Amen. to take Angels, place yes. with that child, that. and I believe that you can do the same. We're, we are out of time. I want uh-huh. you just, if you would, stretch your hand. Forward and let's, let's all stretch our hand forward, yes. camera, and Amen. pray for prodigals right now. Lord Jesus, I just pray for the yes. parents who are carrying the burdens of prodigals and grandparents that they will relieve themselves of guilt, false shame, fear, and mistrust of you. Right now, we speak trust and faith that these children will have circumstances created to bring them home. They will have people sent to them to hear the gospel, even if it's a TV show on Daystar, Mm -hmm. that they will hear the gospel in a clear way. Lord God, they are your children and you want them home. And we agree on earth as is in heaven that they will come home to you and home to us Mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good. Well, we are out of time, but I know how hard it can be when your child is away from God. And I know it's so tempting to worry, but I want you to remember that you, you've got to cast all that care, yes. all that worry, all that fear on Him. You can't take it all on yourself. And you can't try to fix a situation. Only God can do that. And I want to tell you something. Uh, so many of you are free right now because you're like, I've never heard that concept before that it's not my fault because the enemy has been trying to tell you it's your fault. He is a liar. There is therefore now no condemnation Mm -hmm. to those who are in Christ Jesus. That doesn't mean you don't love and pray and continue to do all the things that you're doing. But this is really about trust. I mean, this is really about trusting God because I want you to know something. Get this. He is constantly pursuing your prodigal and he wants you to have peace in this. So again, if you want someone to partner with you in prayer for your prodigal or maybe your heart's really hurting and you need prayer yourself, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We have amazing prayer partners standing Mm -hmm. by ready to pray with you. Or you can, of course, go to daystar.com, click on prayer, just send in their first name and we'll pray over that every day here at Daystar. But I do want to thank our dear friend, Dr. Doug Weiss, for joining us at the table today. And if you have a child who's away from God, be sure to pick up a copy of Dr. Weiss's new book, The Prodigal Parent Process. Also, you've got the DVD series. Mm -hmm. And you've got the workbook. So they can work. So they can get all these things. And you really uh, encouraged um, to get a group, like from your church, to go through this. I think that would be so great. Uh, And for more on his ministry and counseling center, you can visit him online at Dr. Doug Weiss.com. I guess you're seeing people now. Oh, yeah. They're coming in. Absolutely. So don't forget to join the conversation after the program by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We'd love to know how today's program has encouraged you. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, bye bye for today. And guess what? Those prodigals are coming home in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.